Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about the postdoc job. And in a previous video, I've mentioned that there are essentially two types of postdocs, the postdoc job and the foundation postdoc. So essentially, most of you know, foundation postdocs are postdocs from Humboldt Foundation, Fulbright Foundation, Banting postdoc, Japan Society of Promotion of Science, the Swiss National Foundation postdoc, the DST postdoc in India, and so on. Now, what happens with all these foundation postdocs is that you need to write a research proposal, you often need to find a host for your research, and then you apply to this particular foundation. The time process is one year or so. At the end of this process, you get the postdoctoral position. Now, in contrast, the postdoc job is essentially just like a job which is advertised in various places. So you will find it in Google, you will find it in indeed.com, you will find it in some of the faculty web pages and so on, such as higheredjobs.com and so on. So essentially here what has happened is that a professor has obtained a large grant and then he or she is looking for a postdoctoral researcher to do the work which has been specified in the grant. So one of the advantages of the postdoc job is that the actual problem has been laid out for you by the PI for the project. And so it's going to be relatively easy for you to do this work and you do not have to write the proposal and so on. So let's look at some of the aspects which you can do to improve your chances to get a postdoc job. So the number one thing is that you need to match your profile with the job description. So whenever you are applying for a postdoc job position, you need to make sure that you get at least 70% or so of match between your skills and your resume or CV and what the job description is wanting. So essentially here, the field is the key. So if you are in the right field at the right time and the job has come out, you may be able to get the job very easily. So for example, if you are somebody who is working on large language models and there is a postdoc out there on exactly this problem, then you can apply here and it's a good chance that you may get this postdoctoral position. So again, like I mentioned here, fit with the job description is the key in these situations. The number two point is that in these postdocs, papers are good, but they are not as important as they are for foundation postdocs. So foundation postdocs are more candidate centric. They are essentially willing to fund any proposal you come up with, provided you are an exceptional candidate. So they may be looking for something like five or more journal publications sometime. More is better in those cases. People with 10, 15 journal publications may apply for fellowships such as Humboldt or JSPS or Banting. But when you're applying for a postdoctoral job, I would say that having even one to three journal publications is good because what it shows to the PI is that you are capable of doing research, you have decent communication skills, you can write a paper, and then he or she can read your paper and from that they can figure out whether you understand the basic principles of the field and that you can do the research at the university once you go there. So I'd say that in this case even conference papers are good and they are counted because remember that this person is not so much looking at you as an exceptional candidate but more as a person who can do the work which is laid out for him or her. The timeline is pretty short. They want somebody to join at short notice, maybe a few months because they have already obtained the project and that work needs to be done. So in some ways it is like a corporate job. Now the third point is though I said that papers may not be so important here, papers do play a role in uplifting your institutional lineage. So essentially if you are from an institution which is not very well known, which is not a very renowned institution, more papers always helps your case. So one of the things which happens for PhD students is that having a decent number of papers in top journals, say five to 10 journal papers, 
makes them look good whatever be their university so this is something to keep in mind is that any candidate can uplift their phd degree by writing papers and once a person has a decent number of papers in top journals it doesn't matter whether they are doing their phd in us or japan or india or china or morocco or brazil they are all the same because these journals should be international journals they should be good journals and then as far as the pi is concerned they are going to like this candidate now the number fourth issue is that referees are important here but in a different sense compared to the foundation postdoc in a foundation postdoc the referees have to rave about the exceptionality of the candidate how great the candidate is how great his phd work is how great his papers are and so on and this is often like because in the foundation postdoc they are actually trying to reward an exceptional candidate to do whatever he or she wants but here the pi is looking for a reference which tells him or her as to what are your specific strengths for doing the research which he or she wants you to do so make sure that you inform the referee here that they should point out your strengths in the research field and they should tailor your reference letter to the particular job also it's good idea to mention that you have strong work ethic and also you have good communication skills because this is more like a job so what is going to be important is work ethic and communication skills now the next point is that communication skills are very important and this is building on the previous part where i mentioned the referees could point this out but most of the time what's going to happen is that the pi is going to have an interview with you and this interview is going to be online team skype zoom google meet any of these things and then what's going to happen is they are going to probably ask you to make a small presentation and they are going to ask you several questions so essentially this is likely to be your phd presentation so have that ready and then they are going to figure out from this interaction how good you are in terms of research what are your oral communication skills are you a presentable candidate and so on so again communication skills are very important so if you are somebody who has only focused on writing papers make some investment into becoming a good communicator maybe make a video of yourself using your smartphone about how you would give your presentation how you would talk to various questions and try to improve that particular way of performance so that's certainly going to help you presentation is a very important part of any of these postdoc jobs finally the number 6 point which is very important for the postdoc job is that most of these jobs are going to be in relatively hot fields so what often happens is that most of the funding goes toward the latest and the hottest field so it may be in nano science it may be in ai it may be in quantum computing or biotechnology genomic research bioinformatics and so on so very often in these hot areas the phd candidates are often able to get jobs in the industry so there is often a dearth of candidates for postdoctoral positions and so if you are in any of these hot areas you will find that wherever you are in the world whatever your country you can actually get a postdoctoral position in a different country just by virtue of the hotness of the field so essentially this is something you will probably know when you are doing your master's degree try to do your phd in a hot area that's certainly very helpful if you are going for a postdoc job situation now in the case of foundation postdocs that is not so important because they may even be willing to fund pretty classical research fields if they consider you to be an exceptional candidate remember they have a large pool of money so if you are applying for something like the humboldt fellowship they will fund you even if you are doing very fundamental research in fluid mechanics or economics for that matter but when you are applying for postdoc jobs most of the grant funding tends to be in the so called hot fields and therefore if you are somebody who has done a phd in one of these hot areas you are going to get these jobs with much ease also remember that there are a lot of large companies and industry especially in the pharmaceutical sector such as
Pfizer, Novartis, and so on, who are always looking for postdoctoral candidates in their company. So again, these are postdoc jobs, and if you are in the right field at the right time, if you have been working on any of the latest things such as the RNA type of problems or genomics or drug discovery, then of course you can get some of these postdoctoral positions. So this was my take on the postdoc job and in fact the postdoc jobs are far more numerous than the foundation postdoc positions. So they are in the tens of thousands and so you can certainly apply for them and have a high probability of getting them. So I hope this video is useful to you and stay tuned to my channel and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.